Hello, this is Lincoln High School's video submission for the Stand on the Sidelines competition, which challenges to create a machine that will launch a football at specific targets. In this video, we'll be talking about the physics behind it in our building process. Let's get started. According to Wikipedia, projectile motion is a form of motion experienced by an object or particle that is strewn near the Earth's surface and moves along a curved path under the action of gravity only. We see projectile motion in everyday life. The balls we juggle, kick, and throw experience projectile motion. If you're a hardcore gamer, even the angry birds that we catapult toward pigs are an example of projectile motion. We did more research and found that an angle of 45 degrees would be the optimal angle to launch the football as far as possible. Combining Newton's first law, inertia, which says an object will not change its motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force, we know that gravity acts to influence the vertical motion of a projectile, thus causing a vertical acceleration. On the other hand, the horizontal motion of the projectile is a result of the tendency of any object in motion to remain in motion at a constant velocity. This means that a certain initial horizontal speed is needed and the time it takes for the object to fall is constant if we launch it at the same angle. Then, using Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, we see the initial horizontal speed results from the acceleration due to a net force exerted on the object at rest. In other words, if we want to increase acceleration, we have to increase the force. So we tested the motors to see if there was enough force to launch a football. The faster its angular velocity, the more force it would have. Don't do anything stupid. That's pretty hot. I agree. With the motor spinning 22,000 times per minute, we felt like that was enough force to begin building. And so our story begins. We scour the depths of the internet to create the perfect football machine design, searching far and wide. YouTube, Amazon, eBay, you name it all. After what felt like an eternity, we realized the answer was right under our noses. The designs we saw all had something in common. Wheels! So our core design incorporated two wheels and one wheel adjuster on a board angled 45 degrees relative to the floor. By then, we only had one month left, so it was a race against the clock. We created parts using Autodesk Inventor and used Cure to 3 to print them. We got the rest of our parts from the robotics lab. Along the way, we encountered a plethora of obstacles. We lost couplers, team members, we lost our minds! But the Lincoln Tigers would not give up. Their determination and perseverance lived up to the ferocity of their mascot. They continued to build to their heart's content, and this is what they had to show for it. So obviously, it didn't work perfectly the first time we tested it. We had an angle adjuster, but we still need to find the angle. Anyways, our team member Khan is going to explain some electronic components that we use in the project. We use DC motors, which are made up of magnet and coils. These work because of the law of induction, which describes how a magnet field will interact with an electric current. When you run electricity into this electromagnet, it creates a magnetic field that attracts and repels the magnets, so the roller spins to 180 degrees. We use a potentiometer to control the amount of resistance in the controller, and eventually, the speed. And of course, we use the motor controller to control the voltage the motor receives in order to adjust the speed. To do this, we use a method called pulse width modulation, BWM, with a 5 volt signal. We change the amount of time between each signal so that average voltage of the motor will change. When we sent a 0 volt signal, we got 0 volts in the motor, and when we sent 5 volt signal, we got 12 volts in the motor. Thank you for watching, and here are our sources.